Hi, I'm Alexandra and I'm Evan and we are Within Hiking Distance. We were on an epic road trip for 18 months with our son. We visited 22 national parks and drove almost 29,000 miles through 11 states. And today we're going to talk about why you should visit Page, Arizona and what to do inside the city of Page and what to do outside Page. So Page, Arizona is located um, in northern Arizona sharing Lake Powell and next to Utah. It was established in 1957 first kind of as a a camp for temporary uh, workers that worked on Glen Canyon Dam and it's uh, it developing into a more of a hub for tourists and uh, doing activities um, for hiking and all sorts of things so it's 270 miles from Phoenix or Las Vegas and there's a large Navajo population that live there um, that have their own businesses and they sell art and a lot of the um, tribal lands so the Navajo Indian tribal lands um, are located in that area and so if you go on a tour a lot of them require a permit um, to, to visit that those areas. So first lodging in Page. Well there's plenty of lodging uh, because the town is very recent and the tourist boom is even more recent so actually a lot of hotels and motels have been built recently so they're actually fairly nice. Uh, the rooms are really spacious uh, and more than any hotel we've stayed at, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and prices are cheap. When we stayed back in January this year, uh, it was about, it costed us, I think, $33 a night. Mm -hmm. yep. So you can find really good deals there. Um, they are, uh, most of the hotels include breakfast, which is a really nice little feature, and uh, a lot of them are located downtown. Uh, there are a lot of them right next to uh, where you can take the tours for Antelope Canyon and we're going to talk about this in a minute um, and every attraction is really a short drive away. Page is really small so it's a very nice place actually too. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't like to log on too, mu too much mileage with your car then that's definitely a good place to be. Uh, for lodging there's also camping and RVs so there's the Huawei uh, Marina which is, uh, there's a campground and an RV park and it's open uh, year round. And it, it has about 300 sites, uh, including 139 sites with full hookups. And it has picnic tables and fire rings and grills, restrooms uh, on all sides. And um, so it's, it's really nice. It has coin operated shower and laundry facilities uh, located at the store and um, there are restaurants as well around. Uh, there are more information on uh, their website and we will put the link in the description below. Yep. So the next section we're <laughs> going to talk about is what to do in Page. Um, so we're going to talk about two major uh, tourist attractions that are heavily photographed. One being the Upper Antelope Canyon and the other being Horseshoe Bend. So we'll start off with the Upper Antelope Canyon. Um, it's a uh, it is, Upper Antelope Canyon is a sandstone slot canyon that was carved by water during flash floods over thousands of years. Uh, Upper Antelope Canyon is the most famous section uh, known for its amazing photographs with uh, sunlight entering the canyon. So keep, and keep in mind that it's uh, sacred to Navajo people. Upper Antelope Canyon is a half mile easy flat path. Um, it's pretty dusty on the, in there because there's sand on the bottom. There's no stairs and it's not recommended um, for people that are claustrophobic. GoPros and tripods are also not allowed in both upper and lower Antelope Canyons. So, um, re reservation is mandatory and year round. So you cannot just go to the booth of where they give tours and say, I want to go on the tour today because they're going to be sold out. Uh, people book months in advance, sometimes six months in advance for the most, uh, you know, maybe even longer for um, popular holidays or during uh, uh, the season, like, you know, like summer um, when all families are coming. So there's, and there's also a limited amount of people who can visit uh, per tour and per day. Uh, so they have their caps and that's all they can give you. Otherwise, their license can be removed and they're not going to do that. So, you, uh, it costs about $52 per adult right now to visit Upper uh, Antelope Canyon and $42 for children, including, uh, so children from 0 to 12 years old. 
and you need to allow about two and a half hours to um, to to do the tour. So what how it happens is so you meet uh, the tour operator uh, about half an hour before or forty five minutes yeah, before I think the, something like that. Uh, the tour starts and you get your you show them your reservation, get your ticket, and they will uh, bring you to a truck where they're going to drive you because you can only go um, there with them. <clears throat> and they will bring you to the entrance of Antelope, uh, Upper Antelope Canyon. If you go in the winter, make sure you get a warm jacket and scarves because it's going to be dusty. The trucks are open. So it's uh, if you take the first tour at 8 a.m. in the morning, it's going to be cold and it's going to be dusty. So you definitely want to um, dress warmly. And if you're visiting with a child, you need to bring your own um, car seat. So we actually had to take out our car seat from our car and they put it uh, in the uh, driver's cabin. So we're actually lucky we drove with the driver and we were not cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm glad because I didn't plan for us to be, um, to be outside. And I, I thought the trucks were covered, but they were not. So we visited in December. And at that time of year, you know how Evan mentioned the, uh, the sunlight coming in the canyon. It's not, it doesn't happen at that time of year. So uh, I, we would recommend that if you want to go, you actually take the first tour open. I think it's 8 a.m. and that's what we did. <clears throat> and uh, the reason for that is because Upper Antelope Canyon, when you go in the canyon, so you're going to go with your guide and there are going to be six other trucks with you so each guide is trying to get a section ahead so not everybody is uh, overlapping but they kind of you don't really have the time to take a lot of pictures or so they really kind of like make you want to go through it uh, but the thing is you have to come back out the same way you came in so you have all those tourists that are coming behind you and then you're going to have to walk by them and they're trying to take pictures and their guide is telling them, you know, the, the histories and legends about it. And so it's kind of, uh, it's definitely best to go on the first tour because you don't get all this crowd around you when you want to take your pictures or even just, you know, enjoy the place. Uh, we thought that was definitely much better. Uh, and uh, the, uh, Navarro, the guides are Navarros and uh, they will tell you how to, uh, which settings you need to use for your camera and they will take pictures of you also, you know, if there's a specific place that they know exactly, that they know the canyon like their pocket so they will, they will have a lot of interesting legends to share with you and history and um, as for any tour, uh, tipping is expected. Uh, for the guide. So next we're going to talk about Lower Antelope Canyon. This canyon is a half mile one way and there's lots of stairs going down when you descend. The organization is a lot different than the Upper Antelope Canyon. You can drive to the location, you can buy the tickets for the tour, um, you know, that same day within the next couple hours. Lower Antelope Canyon is a walking tour, um, so there's no transportation during this tour. Um, you, there's a waiting area, um, with a small cafe inside the shop and then you, you'll wait more as you descend into the canyon um, with your guide. So tours run every 30 minutes and last about one hour. You'll enter through the main entrance and then you'll exit the main building. And Then you have to stay with your guide the whole time and there's not much interaction. He'll bring you through the canyon and you know you just follow people as you go along and take your photos. So. It was nice, uh, a little bit different than Upper Antelope Canyon, but uh, I guess we preferred the upper one to the lower. Definitely, yes. I mean, if you just have the opportunity to do the lower one because it doesn't get as booked, it's more like come and go. So you, if, if you haven't planned for your trip in Page, Arizona, then you probably can get a slot at some point in Lower uh, Antelope Canyon. Uh, so it's still nice to see, uh, but definitely Upper was much nicer. Mm -hmm. Agree. So the next big landmark we're going to talk about is the Horseshoe Bend. So it is part of the Glen Canyon uh, National Recreation Area and it is a thousand feet drop uh, carved by the Colorado River. It was free when we visited uh, but since uh, mid-2019 
there's a $10 fee for parking. Um, so the parking is owned by the city of Page, which is separate from the Glen, uh, Glen Canyon uh, area. And uh, uh, the national park system estimates that about 2 million people visit the Horseshoe Bend. So it is very busy. And we went uh, in, at two different times. We went over Thanksgiving week, uh, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving weekend, and then in January uh, earlier this year. And uh, there was work on the way to do a visitor center. It, it, it tends to get pretty crowded, especially on the weekends and uh, during holidays, like we mentioned. Uh, the parking is busy, gets full rapidly. Um, I, I don't know how it is now since you have to pay for it, but I imagine it's still the same. It's still a big landmark and people want to see it. And there's also, they, they built an extended parking so that uh, that is separate and for RVs and uh, commercial buses. Uh, so it is uh, a fairly easy hike, uh, about uh, 1.3 miles round trip. Uh, it's all in the sand pretty much. So you go up a little, uh, a little bit on the hill and then you go down toward the uh, horseshoe bend. There's not a lot of elevation gain or change. Um, no, probably not too much. <clears throat> not very much. I mean, any any level can do it, uh, you know, at their own pace. Uh, there's no shade, so uh, if you go and it's really sunny, bring water with you. There's no water available right now uh, at the trailhead, and uh, it's um, so it has an overlook that was built in 2018, which has railing, and so this is a completely safe part, but it's actually really small uh, area compared to how big the, uh, this is. And so uh, you have to be really careful about, because you can just be there sitting on the rock and then you have the drop off in front of you. Uh, there have been a couple of accidents, there were two deaths in 2018. I don't. I haven't seen anything in 2019. So, it looks like you know. If just stay safe and keep some uh, um, distance between you and the and the, and the rim, uh, definitely. Yep. And I actually took some of my best photos from that uh, platform that they built. Um, so you can get some really good ones just just right there if you want. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the next location next to Page, Arizona, is the Glen Canyon Dam. This is 710 feet high, and it's the second highest concrete arch dam in the United States, the highest being the Hoover Dam. It creates hydroelectric power distributed through seven states from Nevada to Nebraska. You can also visit the Carl B. Hayden Visitor Center above the dam, which offers beautiful views on the dam area. It also has exhibits, gift shops, and a, and a bookstore as well. So tours of the dam are operated daily, and the fees range from zero to five dollars a person and a maximum of 20 people per tour so you allow about 45 minutes for this uh, tour to take place uh, we couldn't do it because it was shut down we were there during the government shutdown at one point so no time for that tour so well it wasn't open yeah. i mean it wasn't allowed because yeah. it was shut down yeah. <laughs> yeah. so if you don't have time for a tour you can go to the Glen canyon dam overlook and there's a short trail um, to the scenic overlook uh, viewing Glen Canyon Dam. You can get some good time lapses there and also good photos. So it's an easy trail. Another wonderful place to visit in Page, Arizona is Lake Powell. Uh, it is 186 miles long and it offers about 2,000 miles uh, of shoreline. It is the second largest reservoir in the United States, Lake Mead. Uh, being the largest and um, the water comes from the Colorado River uh, uh, that is behind the Glen Canyon Dam and it took about 17 years uh, for Lake Powell to fill in. Uh, it's a man-made lake and so between it filled in between 1963 uh, to 1980 and um, <clears throat> it was created to allow uh, the excess of water in the region to actually uh, allow it to develop. It was named after uh, Major John Wesley Powell who successfully navigated the first expedition down uh, the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon in 1869. And Lake Powell is part of the National Park System. 
uh, and it is uh, so it is part of the uh, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area and so you can enter uh, the area with your uh, annual pass uh, America the Beautiful and uh, <clears throat> just like any other uh, site on the park system and the marina there, the Wawip Marina, includes restaurants, it has lodging, camping, uh, swimming pools, you can put out your boat and go uh, visit around the lake. Um, and it has absolutely amazing scenery because the rock, there's some red rock and white rock and the blue of the water, it's just, the contrast is really beautiful and uh, there are so many fun uh, recreational activities that you can do there like I said boating, you can go water skiing, uh, swimming uh, so it's really a great area to visit for a family. So the next place we're going to talk about is Rainbow Bridge National Monument located in the Glen Canyon Na National Recreation Area. This is 290 feet high and it's one of the largest bridges in the world it can be accessed either by boat or by backpacking from Navajo Mountain. There's no entrance fees to Rainbow Bridge National Monument, but there's an entrance fee if you go by boat into the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Um, so it's um, unmaintained trails on the Navajo tribal lands to go into the bridge, and so permits are required. And from what we understand, trails are not well marked, so bring a map and, uh, you know, that's highly rec recommended. Right, we didn't get to uh, go and see it because we just didn't... Yeah, we didn't have the time. We didn't have the time. So it maybe just next didn't time. work, <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe next time, but we, we definitely want to go and see it next time. So we're going to talk about hiking now. You know we are hikers and we always look for hikes wherever we go. So there are lots of hikes you can do in Page or around Page. Uh, the city of Page has a, a trail map actually that you can uh, get on their website. And what we did as a hike in Page was called Hanging Garden Trail. And it's a one and a half mile round trip and it's completely flat, it's very easy and it's free. Uh, at the turn of about a quarter mile east um, after uh, the uh, Glen Canyon uh, Bridge on Highway 89, you uh, take a left, I guess. Or right, I mean, if you come from the, the bridge, you take a left and there's a parking 500 yards of the highway and it's very limited parking. There's really not a lot of space, maybe maximum, what, eight cars. It's really small, but it's not very busy, so you should be able to park. And uh, the, pa the path leads to a really beautiful natural hanging garden where the water gets stuck in... Um, the Navarro sandstone and then trickles down and creates actually all this luxurious vegetation. It's really, really beautiful to see and you have really nice views on the landscape around on Lake Powell and mm -hmm. it's really lovely. Yep, you can actually hike up above that garden and uh, there's uh, more rocks and better views if you hike up that way just up behind the hanging garden. So, mm -hmm. Next we're going to discuss what to do outside Page, Arizona. So we're, first we're going to talk about the south of Page and the Lees Ferry area. And now we're going to talk about the Navajo Bridge. It was built to make traveling between Arizona and Utah much easier by car. Before that, people had to take a ferry across the Colorado River. It took 18 months to build the Navajo Bridge and it was uh, opened in January 12, 1929. It was first called the Grand Canyon Bridge and back then it was the world's highest steel arch bridge. It was changed to the Navajo Bridge in 1939, uh, where it's been served for 66 years. With cars and trucks becoming wider and heavier, the historic bridge reached its limitations and the new bridge was built right next to the Navajo Bridge in 1995. So Navajo Bridge is now a pedestrian bridge and there is a visitor center there open seasonally. It was closed when we visited, um, but it has a lot of information and even outside the visitor center it has some information about the bridge and uh, it has beautiful views on the Colorado River that is uh, 767 feet below and it's just like a really uh, fun uh, interesting history you know local history 
and uh, it was free when we visited in January 2019. One hike that we enjoyed in the Lee's Ferry area was called the Cathedral Ross Trail. This one is 2.3 miles round trip and it's moderate. So we hiked the lower part of this uh, trail and uh, so you can eventually get a view on the Colorado River. However, we were not able to get that viewpoint, um, but we had a great time hiking and scrambling over the rocks. Um, there was some water down there, so it was fun to you know, jump over those areas. And uh, seeing some, uh, yeah, the wash is just beautiful. So, and our son loved it. So it's definitely recommended um, if you're in that area, go down that wash, and uh, you know you'll see some amazing stuff. Oh yeah, there were great rocks too. If you love rocks, <laughs> like we do. <laughs> so now about what to do north of Page, Arizona. Well, you can go and see Paria Rim Rocks, also known as the Toadstools. And so this is uh, driving north of Page. You go past the dam and you keep going on the road. And about uh, mile marker 19, you will just see a, park, a dirt parking area on your right. And uh, the trail is part of the Grand Staircase Escalade National Monument. Uh, but I don't believe that you actually need a um, America the Beautiful Pass. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think I saw. I think we might have put ours, but I don't think that it's actually mandatory for because it's kind of really remote. Um, and this hike uh, leads into a wash and uh, it's really easy. There's little elevation, there's a little bit of scrambling in there, but it's really fun. Uh, our son also loved this one. And then you reach the toadstools and they are just absolutely amazing to observe. You can get really close and uh, you know through the different days uh, time of the day you know you get different lights on them so it's it's really a fun area to explore and uh, just if you go there don't touch them you know they need to be preserved they're very fragile so uh, please uh, make everything you can to preserve them and last but not least uh, Vermilion Cliff National Monument so we actually didn't go there and uh, because we didn't know that it was in that area <laughs> and so we didn't plan for it and so it is uh, the, the sandstone uh, swirls of Coyote Butte North are known as the wave and it is one of the most uh, photographed uh, place in, uh, in America and it is, uh, you need a permit to go there uh, and there is a lottery that goes on, so you need to plan for it. This is not something like Upper Antelope Canyon where you can just show up and say, hey, I want to go. Um, so there's a limited amount of permits that are granted. And if you want to visit, you know, plan a long time ahead. And um, it's, you know, I mean, it looks great. So uh, this is definitely something we would look into doing maybe if we can plan a little more ahead <laughs> or travel there. We hope we made you want to visit Page, Arizona. We definitely had a great time there. Uh, so if you have any questions about all the places we mentioned, please let us know in the description below. Uh, don't forget to give us a like if you enjoyed the video and the information inside. And uh, next week we will be live on Thursday at 2.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Take care. Thank you.